Good morning to all of you. I am extremely privileged to be invited for this uh, Hindu Education Forum. And um, I must thank uh, Nijiketa Tiwari for giving me this uh, great opportunity. In fact, um, he was the prime mover behind this old uh, Hindu education movement. And he has done a really fantastic job over the last few years in bringing together the specialists in various fields and by and large concentrating on the higher uh, education and to some extent partly on the high school and the lower school level also. So the service what he's rendering to the nation in this process is yeoman and let's give a big applause to him first. Uh, can I invite the fellow panelists to come on stage? Uh, Dr. Satish Moth, uh, Dr. P. K. Gupta, uh, Professor Maj Bhakta, and um, Anj Anj Anjali Jaipuriya, and Vinay Joshi. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Vinith Joshi was uh, listed, but he has not uh, come over here for this meeting, but others are here. Uh, so we will, uh, uh, I will formally introduce the speakers as the turn comes. Uh, as an introductory remark, let me uh, take a few words. In fact, uh, I have the privilege of uh, having, chairing this session after uh, two major sessions are over. So we have all the benefit and wisdom of the speakers from the previous sessions, and uh, we all heard from them what are the plus and minuses of our education system, and how uh, the our uh, Bharati uh, Samskriti has uh, really laid the foundation for education in the globe itself, and how it has been built up to a certain extent, and later destroyed by the British, and then we are trying to recreate or reemerge. Uh, in that area. While talking about all these things, um, one thing came out very clearly. There was a time in which the education was the proprietary of the government. And uh, there were, the system was created in such a way the government funds it, government uh, regulates it, and then conducts uh, various evaluation and so on. But of all the 60 years of uh, independence have seen that the number of institutions have grown considerably. And uh, today we have nearly 700 universities and something like uh, uh, 30,000 odd uh, colleges at various uh, disciplines. Out of these, 64 percent are private players. When we have a, such a large private participation in education, uh, naturally our policies and guidelines, are they in line or are they in tune with the demands of such a changed uh, system? Uh, that has been a big question raised, and uh, almost every speaker has said that uh, to raise the regulatory mechanism is a real disincentive for a quality education in the country. We have to address this, and uh, we'll let's see how what best it can be done. Then comes uh, the, the, there is a business opportunity, because the further demand is the, this uh, number of uh, uh, education institutions has virtually doubled over 10 years. And that's a big uh, business opportunity, and people can really capitalize on it. But at the same time, there's a question of uh, funding, how we generate the capital for this, how we generate the returns on it, and how we maintain the services of high quality. Again, the point which came out was um, the education and the research should go in hand, hand in hand. There is a lack of research component in most of the education institutions today compared to any Western countries or even in China, the research component is given prominence and that way it leads to a set of good quality teachers, which is a real requirement for ensuring a proper quality education. So the research component has to be strengthened. Uh, then democratization of the institutions, uh, that is something which is important. Though uh, we say that uh, the authority and the powers are delegated, but it is never being practiced. Uh, the private institutions will have to stand in queue for getting approvals for even small, small items on a day-to-day -day basis in front of some office, either state government or the central government. 
and leave alone the so-called uh, prestigious institutions like IITs and IACs. They don't have the autonomy. Every file which calls for uh, expenditure more than one lakh or so, he has to get a signature from Delhi. So this is uh, really not working. So how to liberate them and uh, how to enable them to deliver the right quality service to the education sector is something which needs to be addressed. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to really have a good quality of uh, the students coming out in an employable category, a holistic change in our education system is called for. Uh, in earlier, our Kabul Sahib has uh, clearly mentioned that the teacher, the communication of the teacher to the student, and the teacher understanding the student, and then enabling the student to learn, that is the formula to be adopted. Today it is like a factory where in one end the students come in, there's a set uh, syllabi and set rules and regulations and set pattern of examination. And in fact, uh, there are advertisements saying that uh, we have cracked the code of CBSE, we have cracked the code of uh, joint entrance exam and so on. So what is the use? So that means, you know, there is a process in which things are happening mechanically and if somebody is able to crack the code, so to say, they come out very successfully from the school or the college. But the net result is they are a big zero as far as the productivity is concerned. I have first-hand experience. I have been in the process of getting talented people for the ISROS program. We found that when you conduct a all-day level test for about a lack of students or so coming out of leading engineering institutions, we hardly find thousand students qualifying to a, a pass mark level, to a, a, a very common standard questions. So that shows that the basic understanding of the subjects, it is not being imparted to this class of students. So a also change, in, we have to revisit, are we teaching them the right thing in the colleges? Are we enabling them to learn? Are we enabling them to apply their knowledge for solving the problems? So this is something which needs to be addressed. Again, there was a big hue and cry about the percentage of students who, are, who can get a higher education. But I am of view that a student which uh, completes 10 years of education in the school, or maybe uh, 12 years after plus two, they should become the employable category. They should have the knowledge, they should have the skills, they should be able to work with their hands in some field or other. They should be empowered. If we want to do that, we have to see that the students are selected and their efforts are channelized in an area of their liking. There is no point in teaching every student all the complexities of the higher level of mathematics, uh, the physics, or the, the, higher, the attractive features of uh, literary activity and so on. We have to spot the talents. That is the combined effort of the teacher and the parents at the early stage of schooling. At the primary and the secondary level of schooling, they have to really be the selective. And after the, the middle school level, they have to be channelized. And they have to be trained in the area which they can really flourish. And enable them to work with their hands. Even today, if somebody comes out of school, they cannot even draft a letter. Or if somebody comes out of a technical school, they can't even change a bulb in a domestic household. So that's the kind of uh, thing. Which, uh, so you have to have practical laboratories, whether it is in science, literature, or uh, commerce, or whatever it is. There has to be places where these children can go and learn what are the day-to-day -day needs of the society and how the knowledge, what they acquired, can be utilized for that. Then most important is there has to be a value, uh, highest quality, the Indian tradition of the moral value has to be injected at the young level, young age itself. That is the time when the minds can be molded. We have to, today, why all this corruption, greed, and all those things happening? Because they don't have the concern or the sensitivity towards the society, towards the fellow being, even towards their household. So unless we inject these basic qualities in the minds of children, we cannot have a successful product coming out of the schools. Uh, with time, this has vanished. 
So this is something which needs to be addressed. And again, we can look at what we have done in the Gurugulab system, and there, you know, how people try to absorb the gist of it. What are the methodology? They are the guru. He is a center. So can we have a mentor when a person, when a child enters at the LKG level until uh, he or she completes the uh, schooling at the primary level? She is uh, the, the child is mentored and guided to go through this inject moral values into it, and enable them to learn. Don't spoon feed them. You provide a platform by which they can learn. Today, the technology has grown. We are satisfied with 18,000 slogans of Vedic Vedas at one time. But today, if you want to translate the modern knowledge into similar thing, we require 18 billion slogans. So we should not worry about the numbers. We should talk about how to learn that. How to acquire the knowledge, not mugging up. Re go to the fundamentals, understand the principles, and raise their platform. And their mental activity should be such that they can acquire knowledge in a positive. And then more than that, correlate the knowledge with what is happening around and how to apply for solving the problems of society. The, what the Western society finds today as a solution may not be applicable to Bharat. Our country is different. We have got 600,000 villages. All the villages have got unique problems. The problems of the north, it will not be applicable to the south or east or west. So one has to find solutions locally. If you want to do that, the, the observation capability, the analytical capability, the finding solutions, and giving the courage to work with confidence, that should be the aim of education.